Welcome back to this channel. Watch to the end for channel shout out. You are welcome back. Thank you. All this food for me alone. I can't even eat much. I had a lot of food on the flight. Big Daddy you must eat this food. Do you think this is the way we have it every time here? I made this specially for you. No Glory. You must be kidding me. I can't even eat much. Remember you said it at the airport that I've gotten fatter. So I am trying to watch my weight. Big Daddy, you must eat this. When you get back to Chicago you can trim down, but eat this food first. My brother eat this food, you know that you are in Nigeria now. You guys are working together. I won't listen to you. Anyways let us bless this food. Time is far spent, my brother pray for us. Father Lord, we thank you for this food. We ask that as we eat let it nourish our body in Jesus name. Amen. So Chris, that is why I am here. It is not something we should be discussing on the phone. When my boss told me that we needed someone with a sound knowledge of immigration laws. Casually I told him about my brother who is in Nigeria. Then he said get me that guy as soon as possible. I couldn't believe it. I thought he was joking. But when I saw his seriousness I decided to come. So my brother if you are interested we can start with the process now. What are you talking about? Me interested. Big bro I am more than interested, this is a dream come true, who will not be interested to go to America. I am more than interested, this is an answer to long days of fasting and prayers, do you know how many days I have fasted and prayed? Well, we thank God. God has done it so pack your things. In a week time you will be with me in God's own city, Chicago. This is unbelievable, it seems I am dreaming, I hope this is not a dream, anyways even if it is a dream it has to be a dream come true, Thank you so much I really appreciate it. You know when we were discussing on the phone, I was asking you questions but you keep insisting that you were coming home. I was thinking you were deported. Who? Me? Deported? Are you kidding me? Who will deport me after living in the city for 23 years? No way, nobody can do that to me. Now Chris, you have to keep this to yourself, right? Nobody should hear about this except your wife, you know our people, do not tell anybody until few days before we take off. I am not a kid, I can assure you this discussion will not leave the four walls of this house, and I trust my wife that she will keep her mouth shut until I leave Nigeria. Thank you so much brother, thank you for this favor you are doing me, I promise that you will never regret it. Thank you for allowing God to use you to change my life and my destiny. It is my pleasure to do it, if I don't do it for you, who else will I do it for? You are my kid brother. If you come to Chicago we will be able to plan for the progress of our family together. All the responsibility of the family is now on the two of us. Honestly, I must confess to you that there is no month that I collect my salary that I will not divide it into 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 places. I will send money to Auntie Julia in the village. I will give Goddy money, Sister Jimmy and many others. Yes I know, I can feel the heat too. When people talk to me on the phone I feel the heat and what you are passing through, yours is even better. If you give Godi 500,000 Naira, he will merely say thank you. If I give Godi $500,000 he would look at me with scorn and even curse me. Not knowing that $500,000 is even more than 500,000 in Naira in several places. Big bro, the mindset of those of us in Niger is that you people in America work in dollar. Well now it is your turn to come to Chicago and work on dollars or plant your tree to be picking dollars from your tree. I just thank God for your life, if not for you and the way God has helped you to be helping some of us in the family, who knows what would have become of each and every one of us. And we really have to thank God for Auntie Julia, God has really used her to help all of us, especially since our mother died. She has been the one taking care of us, that is why I cannot afford not to send anything to her in the village. Yeah. God bless Auntie Julia. Well then, if I also come to America, we can also share the burden. Yeah I know, Auntie Julia has tried, thank God for everything, so my brother, America here we come. Yes, American here I come. A few weeks later. I am coming, Uncle Chris. How are you? I am fine. Mama, your baby has become a big girl now. It is the work of God. 
It is the work of God and the work of Mama. Welcome my son, how is your trip? Well I thank God. I know you are surprised to see me because this is not the end of the month. I am surprised and also happy to see you, I am happy to see you my son. Thank you Mama, so Mama how has it been? I am fine, without you people, what is life to me, I just wish that my sister is alive to reap the fruit of her labor, and your sister too went to an early grave. I don't know why this cold hands of death snatched them away at such tender ages. Mama, leave that story. Life goes on now, thank God we have you, you have been taking care of us for over 20 years, God has been using you to raise the five of us. So we thank God for having you, and thank God for you having us as your children, even though we lost Stella but yet God has kept us and the rest of us, so life goes on. It was Stella's stubbornness that killed her, she refused to listen to me, I told her that a pregnant woman should not only depend on what doctor said. Doctor said this, doctor said that, there are traditional ways of dealing with pregnancies and delivery to avoid complications. I sent for her several times, but she refused to come. Well mama, there is nothing we can do to reverse that, that has become history, life goes on, let even thank God for life, for your life and the life of the rest of us. Please there is something very important that brought me. I hope there is no problem. I hope all is well. There is no problem, in actual fact I brought good news. Really? Yes, but before I tell you I need to eat. Okay, Alice. Mama, this food is delicious, I must confess you cook very well. Thank you my son. How I wish I can be coming home every week, so that I can be eating your food. That is why you have a wife, so that you can enjoy good cooking, your wife cooks very well too. I know mama, but just as the saying goes that east or west, home is still the best, thank you for this delicious meal. You are welcome my son. Mama, the good news that brought me is that, I too will be going to America. Really, America? God I thank you, so we have two sons in America. Yes, Kyle and I. Almighty God I thank you, so when are you going? Is it your office that is sending you there or you are going on your own? Well I am going on my own to go settle down there, and once I settle down, I will send for my wife and children. But Chris my son promise me you will not forget your mother. Mum, you know that I can't forget you, you have been there for us since all these years, so why do you think I can forget you? I can't forget you. You know that I cannot do any work now, it is only what you people give me that I feed on. I know. Don't abandon your old mother when you get there. Mama, you know I can't forget you, you have been good to me and every one of us in the family, you are the only one we have, so we can never forget you. I particularly cannot forget you. So when are you going? By the grace of God I will be leaving next week. Next week? Yes. If that is so I will give you something to take along to protect you anywhere you go. Mama, you and this your traditional protection, you know as a child of God I don't believe in all that, I don't need to carry anything for protection. If I need to carry anything about for protection then it means I don't need Jesus, I don't need God again. But with Christ in my life, I am protected because he is my shield and buckler, so don't worry yourself mama. You are a small boy, you are just as stubborn as your sister, you think I don't go to church sometimes, but heaven help those who help themselves. What I need from you is nothing but praying for me, Kyle and the rest of us, simple. Okay, I know that you will say that but I will continue to pray for all of you, you will go well, it will be well with you, the land of America will do you good. Amen. When you get there, you and your brother will dwell together with peace, love and understanding. Amen, Amen. One week later. Welcome my dear, have your seat. Thank you ma, good morning. You are welcome. Thank you sir. Hope there is no problem, Glory, are we safe? Yes you are safe, actually my husband asked me to come and beg you sir. Beg me, for what, I don't understand. My husband said you should forgive him. For what? For not coming to tell you before he traveled. I don't understand, traveled to where? To America. America, just like that, my own brother, living just two kilometers from my house, this is disappointing.
Mrs. Glory, what? So you and your husband can behave like this? In fact this is disappointing, as close as we are, you can't tell us your plans or your secret. Anyway we learn every day. So when is he coming back? He actually said he will call and explain everything to you when he gets there sir. So it is a sudden thing that you don't know before. We are Christians, we should not behave like unbelievers, many people don't want to tell people because of their fear. Anyway, that's all right, we bless God, congratulations. We are so sorry, it was so sudden. You see, I am not annoyed neither is my husband, but we are just disappointed because you did not see us as close enough to confide in us. Come to think of it, he knows all my plans and my movements, he knows when I am going to the village to visit our relatives. He is just like a half-brother to me, Chris of all people. No problem, anyway he has already traveled, staying here arguing will not change anything, so let us give thanks to God. Yes we thank God. Let me get you something to eat. No, I left the children at home so I have to leave now. Wonders shall never end. So Uncle Chris can behave like this at this age and stage, as close as we are, this is serious. I just don't understand, is it that there is no one we can trust or refer to as family again, Chris of all people, this is disappointing. Chris, I don't think this call is necessary again, you are already in the States, no, I thought we were close. I don't think this call is necessary again. It is okay, bye. Money woman, are you not going to close your store, it is late already. I wanted to close then one customer entered, before I finished with the first customer another one entered and then another again so I decided to stay. The money woman, you never joke with your business. I know you too, you that is working in dollars, your husband sends for you packages every month, and another one is here today again. You guys don't understand, each time Chris sent money, there is always an instruction on how to use it. Really? It is either his relatives, friends, colleagues or others, let me just open it and read what he wrote. Even the last time he sent money to me, he said we should use it for international passport, but when I called him to complain, he said that we should not worry. He said he wanted us to come to America, so I want you to pray for us so that we can go to America and meet my husband. Don't worry about prayers. Now listen, darling please give the cash out as follows, Auntie Julia $100, Uncle Tony $100, Lucy $50, James $50, Festus my former colleague $100. You and the children $100, please try and send Auntie Julia money for her on time, I will try to send something down again in two weeks time, I will call you tomorrow evening, bye, love you always. You see what I am saying? It is always like this, each time he sent money, Auntie Julia is always at the top of the list. This is serious, people will not know, thank God that you are working, because if you are not working they will think that it is your husband doing all the work. Imagine that amount that he sent to you, and you have to settle everybody like that, God will continue to help you. Amen. My dear this is serious, you need to help your husband, you need to help him to save some money, because all these people your husband is sending money to. They are using their own money to build houses, the day your husband stopped to give them money, they will start calling him names. They will say he is an enemy of progress, he is this, he is that, my dear you people need to be wise, you must know what you are doing. Like she rightly said, you need to be wise, because in this life when you are giving them, they will accept you as a nice person, but if you stop, it is another story. You need to be wise, going down to America is not an easy thing. Like the time I traveled, that time it was cold, I vowed that I will never go to abroad again, because I don't want to die. Don't talk like this, as for me I will go to America, because this place. I have changed my mind, me too I will go. It is already 7. Imagine we are here talking not knowing that time has gone, let us be going home now. Thank you so much everyone, see you next time. We are going together. Okay then let us get going. You are welcome. Thank you Ma and Sir, I am glad to inform you that we have gotten our passports. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. Thank you sir. So when are you applying for the visa? We are waiting for Chris to send the invitation letter to us, but I don't know if you can get any of your friends that is working in the American embassy to help us out. 
Why not? But I believe Chris' invitation will be more authentic and helpful when you are applying for the visa, but why not? All right, sir, but then you still need to pray for us, sir, so that we can have favor when we go for the interview. God will grant you and your children favor. Your dream of becoming Americans will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. The prophetess have prayed and the Lord will grant you favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. I will be on my way now because of the children. Okay. Okay. Greet my children for me. They will hear, Ma. So it was difficult for Chris to tell me his plan. So Chris just left like that without informing me. Dear that is human being for you. Chris that knows all my plans. This is disappointing honestly. God used us when he didn't have a job. When he lost the job. God used us to connect him with a better job. When he could not pay his house rent. God used us. When he could not pay his children's school fees. God used us. Now that he now left for America. We have become useless to him. My dear just forget about everything. I have forgotten. It is just paining me. Chris, Chris, Chris. After all I have done for you. What is it? It is okay. Welcome Ma. Is Peace back? No Ma. I am sure she will be back soon. We are running out of items and it is almost noon. Yes I know. Joe called when I was coming and he said they need some items in the other shop. When she comes, let her take some items that them. Hello. Hello Karen. It is me Cindy. Listen are you alone? I am in the shop. Please listen very carefully and hold yourself together. Why? We lost Chris this morning. What? Where? How? He was on his way going to work this morning when he suddenly screamed out in the train, he clenched his chest and slumped. People in the train dialed 911 immediately, but before help could come Chris was gone. Oh my, it can't be true, no I am dreaming, am I dreaming? Just like that, this is bad news, is it true or you are joking? How can I joke with something like that? No this can't be happening, just like that. Karen listen, you are the only one I could trust to call, I know that you will handle things maturely, you will inform your husband and both of you will find a way to break the news to Glory. To Gotti and the other members of the family, Kyle and I are going to the hospital soon. The parcel he sent is still with me, what am I going to say? Is it the parcel I am going to give her or... Oh God. I will talk to you later. God, why, why? Ma, what is it? Is everything alright? Your hands are still shaking. Peace everything is not okay, there is a big problem here. What is the problem mom? Glory's husband is dead. What? Our sister Glory? Yes our sister Glory. Why God? Is it not her husband who sent the parcel? The parcel is still inside there. I don't know how I am going to say this to her. What is she going to do now? Is it the parcel I am going to give her or the bad news? At this early age this is too much. That she is planning to go and see her husband in a few weeks. Yes peace, but everything is shattered, I don't know how to say this to her. What are we going to do now? Anyway let me call my husband. Hello dear. Hello dear, it has happened, there is a problem, I just received a call right now that your brother Chris is dead. How are we going to say this to Glory? Calm down, calm down. Just be coming home. I am on my way right now, okay. Okay thank you. This is too much, no, no. Anyway I will tell Rebecca to tell her what is going on. Hello Rebecca I want to discuss something with you, I can't tell you on the phone, please come to my shop, okay thank you. This is too much, this is terrible, and she is making plans to join her husband in a few weeks. See what happened, the dream of going to America is shattered. Peace go back to the other shop and help them out there. Yes mom. This is terrible, the plan of going to America is shattered. Karen, what is it? Why do you sound like the world is on you? Why are you crying? What's wrong? Talk to me, why are you crying? What is it? What is going on here? Your friend. Which of my friend? Glory. What happened to Glory? Glory's husband is no more. Jesus, how will she take it? What happened? I just don't know. Oh my god, this is too much, how will she take it? I don't know how she will take it. Hello. Are you okay? I'm okay. Rebecca why are you crying? I am okay. I am not crying. Nothing is wrong with me. 
She just received a call from home and since then she has been crying. Rebecca take it easy, all will be well. Please let me go, I will come back. Take care. You are welcome. Thank you ma. You are here early, hope all is well. I am not feeling well, I came to pick up the package. Oh the package, Sister Glory I am sorry the package is at home with my husband, Daddy said you should come home that he needs to see you. He wants to discuss some things with you. Why? I just saw your husband three days ago when I came to tell him about the international passport. You know he just wants to tell you some things. Not today ma, I need to go home. You don't want to take your parcel. No ma'am, I am not feeling well, I need to go home. You don't need to go. I am not feeling too well, it is like a premonition and I'm worried. I don't understand, just for you to pick the parcel and go home. Is he at home? Yes. I have been calling Chris since morning, his number is not going through, can I use your phone? No, why, why do you want to call him? I have been calling him since morning but it is not going through. Don't worry, when you get back home in the night, he will call you. Anyway take the phone. His number is not going through. I told you, just relax your mind, in the evening he will call, maybe he is at work. So, do we go home now? Yes let's go. You asked me to come here that daddy is waiting for me and he is not here. He is coming. Welcome sir. Glory, we received a call this morning from US, that your husband was involved in a car accident. Chris. Calm down. Is Chris dead? No, I never said that, he is not dead, he is in America, they have a good medical profession. Is Chris died? No, Glory calm down. So, is this why you were crying this morning? No, calm down. So, why were you crying? No, he is just in a critical situation, I can't deceive you, do you believe me? Do you believe us? Glory calm down, I have the parcel, but it is not about the parcel this time, let just pray everything will be alright, okay? Chris, you didn't tell me it is going to be like this, we have so many dreams together, you didn't tell me you are going to go too soon. What you told me is that you are coming back for me and the children, and now the passport is ready. Chris, Chris. So it is all over, Chris is gone forever, I don't even understand why God allowed this to happen, first it was our mother, sister Stella and now Chris. Who knows what will happen next, who will die next? We need prayers, we need help, in fact we need God's intervention. For a while, I thought it was a dream, I thought I would wake up one morning and find out it was a dream, but this is a real, Chris is gone. And I know they killed him, they killed him, what did he do? Glory, for over two months now you have been saying they killed your husband, so who do you think killed your husband? People die every day, maybe his time was up. No mummy, I know my husband did not die a natural death, somebody killed him and I know God will judge whosoever is responsible for Chris' death. He will not go scot-free. Glory I have been telling you times without number that you should leave God to judge, God is the only person that can judge everybody. He sees everything that is hidden, your own is just to thank God, let us just be giving thanks to God. Even in your bitterness, be careful of what comes out of your mouth, the Bible says in everything we should give thanks. Do you mean I should be thanking God? Yes. We have been praying, we had a vigil just because of Chris, so many times he would call me that he had several dreams, attacks and demons suffocating him in his dreams. He had constant fears, the church prayed, the pastor prayed, everyone prayed. Glory I understand, just let us continue to give thanks to God, I feel your pains, I know how difficult it is, it is not easy but at the same time, we should give thanks to God. Let us see it this way, what if you had traveled down to join him over there and something just happened suddenly like this, do you know what people will say? People will say that you are the one that killed your husband, so we should give thanks, let's just leave everything to God please. Glory, I killed your husband. I think I am responsible for the death of my brother Chris, I mean if I had not come and taken him to the States, maybe he could have been alive today. I thought I was doing myself a lot of good by taking him to the States, 
I thought if he lived with me in the state we will see the progress of the family. I never knew that I was plotting his death. In fact I am responsible for his death. Hold me responsible and I won't forgive myself for this. Big Daddy, please don't say that. I know you don't mean any evil. If we had come to America, I and the children would have been forever grateful. For the good that you meant for us, I am not holding any grudge against you. If you don't hold any grudge, then why do you refuse to look at those pictures? You don't understand, I can't look at those pictures, Chris was your brother, he was my husband, my strength, my life, Chris loved life. He was filled of life when he was going to the airport, I remembered his last word when he said he was coming back for me and the children. I remember that smile on his face when he said very soon we would meet in America, I can't imagine Chris on a deathbed, in a casket or in a grave. Glory, tears will not bring Chris back, if it could, he would have been back, all I will just say is that you should hold yourself together. Brother Kyle, I would like you to follow me back tomorrow. Me? Why? What for? Of course to go and see my pastor for prayer, can't you see that we need prayers with what our family is going through? Are you serious? Me? Are you really sure you want me to follow you to see your pastor? Yes. Or you need someone that will drop you off there? Did I tell you that I don't have my transport fee? It is just for our own good, we can't afford to lose anyone in our family again. Whatever. I am not interested in your pastor whatsoever. Count me out, period. But we need it. I am telling you that we need prayers. You are right. Prevention is better than cure. We need to come closer to God. We all need to give our life to Jesus, and more especially we need to intensify more in prayers. To prevent future negative occurrences or evil, shall we pray? Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father we appreciate you for your grace that is upon every one of us, we thank you because your word says. Secret things belongs to you, you are the one that can reveal to us and our children, your words further says we shall call upon you. You will show to us great and mighty things we know not, Father we are asking you to reveal to us details of what we need to know concerning this situation on ground. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Sister Jummy, you said you lost somebody in your family. Yes pastor, Chris, one of my brothers here taken to America. Has he been buried? Yes. I buried him in the States. What the Lord revealed to me is a fresh grave being dug in your family. God forbid, another person. Hope you are not traveling soon. I still have one more week to spend, but I plan to go to the village tomorrow to see Auntie Julia and some other members of the family. Traveling to the village this time is suicidal, we need to have time to pray more before you embark on any journey. Hello brother Kyle, sorry for the death of your brother, I was shocked when I heard the news, I pray the Lord put an end to all the negative occurrences. Amen, Reverend, thanks. If I may ask when are you coming back to the US? Very soon, maybe in the next one or two weeks. I asked because since we spoke on the phone last night and I decided to go into prayers for you, to seek the mind of the Lord for you. So I am glad you called, so that I can share it with you. Wow, so what did the Lord say my reverend? Brother Kyle, you will need to spare some days for fasting and prayers before you come back to the US, and you need to start it right away. Days of prayer, I don't understand, prayers for who and for what? Of course prayers for you and your family, for God's deliverance and protection, because the Lord revealed to me that. There is a strong spiritual personality that is troubling your family, he or she wants to kill everyone, he wants your family to be dying one after the other. Which the Lord doesn't want for you, so you need to spend some day in serious prayers and fasting. What, Reverend Wait, are you saying that more people in my family will soon die? Well I am afraid, that is what the Lord revealed to me while interceding and praying for you. This is surprising, it is surprising because you are the second person to say this, Jummy's pastor also said that. He said something about a fresh grave being dug somewhere around my family. Yes I still have one week to go but I want to go to the village to see Auntie Julia and other members of the family. Okay, I can't stop you from your travel to see your family, I have a strong conviction that you should start the fasting and prayer before going to the village. Okay, Reverend. Thank you. If you don't mind, can we start the prayer today? Let me pray for you. Father in the name of Jesus, 
I ask that you protect and preserve your son, destroy every forces of darkness, principalities that wants to destroy his life and that of his siblings in Jesus' name. Amen. I receive it. God bless you. Thank you, my reverend. So this is the final truth. Chris actually left us too. What kind of life is this? A woman comes into marriage and she is dead. The daughter followed. The son followed. All in a space of how many years? Can this be the truth? It is difficult to believe my brother. In fact, every time I think of this, something comes to my mind that something is definitely wrong with our family. All is not well. How can we all be alive and these things are happening to our brother's family? What can we do? Do we have power over death? Death does not know the one on the throne. I know we have no power over death but we can still do something. Yes we have to do something, because if our brother were alive, he would not fold his hands and allow calamity befall his family and we need to be careful. Nothing must happen to the three remaining children, because if anything happens to them, people will start pointing accusing fingers on our family, but what exactly can we do? I know we can do something, let us go and find out what is really happening. Auntie Julia, you are the mother to all these children, we feel for you, we feel your pain. No you don't, you can't feel my pain Fidelis, this children has been my only hope for the future, I am an old woman now, they are the ones taking care of me. This house that we are in, they are the ones that built it for me, Chris sent me money every month when he was here in Nigeria. It was only this few days that he went to America that he did not send much money to me, he said he was trying to settle down. I don't have anyone, these are the only children I have, they are the one to stand for me when I die. Who did I offend? What did I do? It is well sister, that's alright. This is too much for me. I know the enemy have done this but God will take absolute control. What is God waiting for? Is it until all of us die? That is why I said we should go and find out what is happening. Fidelis I don't understand what you mean by finding out what is happening. But if what you are thinking is consulting a native doctor, then count me out, as a Christian the first will never go to a fetish house, and no matter how long vengeance takes, God will definitely catch up with them. And they will be punished for everything they have done. Listen, Christian, 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 that is why you people are so slow and allow the devil to dance with your head. Who told you the devil is dancing on Christian's head? Look. If you want to go to the native doctor, you can go there alone. Enough of all this argument brothers, if we are not careful we will begin to point accusing fingers on one another, which is not the reason why we are here. Carl has given us the whole report, let us meet here again tomorrow so we can decide on what to do with Chris wife and children. Brother Sam Lee is very good, let us meet here tomorrow the same time. Okay then, Carl take care of Auntie Julia. We will be back tomorrow. But sir. Him. Sister please pull yourself together. We shall be here tomorrow. Mama good evening. Thank you. I hope you are not too tired. I am not too tired but I am feeling sleepy. Anything. Kyle. There is something I want to discuss with you before you go to sleep. Alright mom. Bring it up. I didn't want to say much in the meeting when your uncles were here. Because this life is complicated and you don't know who your real enemies are. I don't get it. What I am trying to say is that, in this life, you can't trust anyone because sometimes the thieves we are afraid of lives in the same house with us. I don't want you to trust any of your uncles especially Fidelis. How do you mean? I don't understand. I have been making some findings myself. Findings? How? Yes, you think I will fold my arms when my roof is on fire. I visited a native doctor last week before you visited. So what did the native doctor say? Did he mention who is behind Chris's death? He said some people are responsible but he didn't tell me who. However he said we should bring some things and we should act fast before we have another casualty in our hands. Casualty? Oh my goodness. I don't know any native doctor but this man where does he live? Or let him tell us something. He should be able to reveal to us who is behind this nonsense. Kyle calm down, they have done their worst, let them also feel the pain, the native doctor is going to help us. 
If he reveals to me who is behind this, I am going to skin that person alive. Just calm down, the native doctor is going to help us. Alright. However, the native doctor said we need to do some things for your protection as the first child, yes, he said they have made several attempts on you. He said because your head is too strong for your enemies they failed. Really? Yes, he said it is your head that is protecting Goddy and Jummy, so we need to buy some items for your protection. So what did he say we should buy? He mentioned some items, he said one black he goat, six yards of white cloth, six yards of black cloth, six yards of red cloth, six cowries, and one bottle of red oil. My goodness, where are we going to get all these stuff from? Mom, can we not just give him the money to buy all those things for us? Must we buy them? Yes, if you give me the money I can go and get some of the, the items, but he said you, yourself must buy the he goat from the market. No problem, if someone can follow me to the market I can buy it and give you money for the rest. No, I can't go with you to the market, just make sure you buy the he goat yourself and give it to me. Okay. I will take it with the other items to the shrine. Okay, so when are we going to buy this? We can go tomorrow. Okay, in the morning then. You can have a good night rest. Thank you ma. Have a wonderful night rest my prince. Mom, thank you. Father in the name of Jesus, every power working against this family, die, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Everyone fighting us, killing us, Lord, the mighty one in battles, fight them and let us have our victory. What is that noise? It is coming from the room, let us go and check. No, no I said cover it, cover it, I will talk, cover it, witch goat. I will talk, I will talk, you said it is after another two years, but it is less than six months, you are a liar. Leave me alone, I will talk, why are you telling him to dig Uncle Kyle's grave? When Uncle Chris' grave is still very fresh. I will talk, leave me alone, you are a liar, you are a wicked mother, I will talk, I will talk, leave me alone. Favor, who are you talking to? Mummy, nobody. Who are you talking to? What do you mean? Whose grave are you digging? Auntie please don't let me talk. If you don't talk now, I will dip you inside the grave. Talk now, whose grave are you digging? Auntie please don't let me talk, they will kill me. You mentioned Chris and Kyle, who killed Chris? It is Auntie Julia and Uncle Fidelis. You are a liar, Lear. Please dear, let me handle this. Okay. Favor look at me very well, nobody will kill you, I promise you nobody will kill you, do you want them to kill Uncle Kyle? No, they will kill Uncle Kyle but it is too early. Who wants to kill Uncle Kyle? It was your prayers that did not allow me to go to the meeting all this while, it was when I get to the meeting tonight, I saw them digging Uncle Kyle's grave. Digging Uncle Kyle's grave? Yes. Why? When Uncle Chris was in America, I and Uncle Fidelis used to go to America and beat him, Mama used to send us to go and beat him. But when it was now time, Mama said it is enough that she will go by herself, she was the one that killed Uncle Chris. Dear, this girl is a liar. Hold on my dear, are you saying it was Mama that killed Uncle Chris? She was the one, they dug four graves. You are lying, you are lying. I am not lying. Auntie Julia. I am not lying, they want Uncle Kyle to buy a goat, if Uncle Kyle should buy them goat and give it to them, he has given away his life by himself. What? If they kill the goat Uncle Kyle will die too. Dear, this girl is lying. I am not lying. Are you sure that you are telling us the truth? I am not lying. How can Auntie Julia kill Chris? How? This is the woman that has been taking care of us since the demise of our mother. She is the one. Favor, Auntie Julia took care of us, fed us, sent us to school. If it turns out to be a lie, you won't find it easy with me at all. I am not lying. If you want to know the truth about your family, you need to calm down and be very careful, remember the revelation about a fresh grave. Okay. Are you telling us the truth that Mama killed Uncle Chris? And she is about to kill Uncle Kyle? It is Mama, she is the one and Uncle Fidelis that killed Uncle Chris and was the one that killed Grandma. She was the one that killed my mother because my mother Stella was too stubborn, she was the one that killed Uncle Chris. Because since Uncle Chris traveled to America he has not been sending for her enough money to take care of herself, I am not lying. My dear we need to call Kyle right away. Hello, Caleb how far? 
Yes, Carl. It's me, Caleb. Carl, you need to listen to me carefully. We have an issue here, and we need to come down to the village tomorrow morning. We have an information of somebody that killed Chris. What? Information about Chris' death? Yes, sir. One more thing, sir. If anybody should tell you to buy a goat, please don't buy. What? What happened? Don't buy any goat. Don't give anybody any money. We will get to the village tomorrow morning. It's okay. Everything is alright. Okay, God bless you. Wonders shall never end. Okay, we will wait and see. We shall see. Dear, is it true? Yes. Hold on, I need to call everybody. Hello, it's me. There is a new development. We need to gather in the village tomorrow morning. It's okay, alright. Oh my goodness. Dear, we need to calm down. We need to get to the village tomorrow morning. Let's go back to sleep. Uncles and aunties, my sister and brother, I called this meeting and I am going to pick my words one by one, so that you can all understand me. Auntie Julia, my mother died at a very young age and when we were still very young too as children, you took it upon yourself to take care of the five of us as your own children. But let me ask you, why do you find it so convenient to send my mother into an early grave with her children? What do you mean? Are you accusing me of killing my own sister and her children? Kyle, I have been taking care of all five of you since your mother died. I feed you, I clothe you and I even sent you to school, why didn't I kill you till now? Is that so? So why did you decide to kill my mother, my sister and my brother, why? Me Kyle, are you calling me a witch? Yes you are a witch. Me Kyle, you and Uncle Fidelis have been planning all along to take our life, each one of us has a time set for us, why? Or do you want to deny it? You are a witch, you want to deny it, go ahead, I have your accuser here, bring her in. Good evening everyone, I have the recorded video, I recorded everything you were saying, let me play it so you can see. Few minutes later. This is terrible, Julia you. I can't believe it, she has betrayed womanhood and pronounced judgment upon herself. And you Fidelis, why didn't you kill your own children? From now on the two of you cease to be a member of this family. You have brought shame and disgrace upon your own heads. No member of this family will henceforth be in touch with you. If anyone does that, such a person will be dealt with. Please, let's have mercy. What are you saying? All these people are wicked. This is total wickedness. I can't stand this. Me too, I am leaving. Please have mercy on them. Mercy my foot, this demons. Never. Brother Kyle, please don't go, you can't afford to leave us like this, what will now happen to our family? I am sorry we came late. Brother Kyle, where are you going to? I am going to the States. Anyway, Kyle has called and explained everything to me, and you see, it is not about finding fault or who is responsible for anything. Obviously there are problems in this family, but I have found the solution. Really? Bring it up. If I talk now you will say it is Jesus, Jesus is the only assurance and insurance, that is why no devil or household wickedness can catch me and my family. I want to tell you, all you need is Jesus, a life without Christ is crisis, even if you run to Chicago, does it stop the enemy? Why don't you give your life to Jesus? Carl I am not talking about being religious here, but knowing Jesus personally. Knowing him as your personal Lord and Savior and as a solution, life without Christ is serious crisis, Auntie Julia you need Jesus, we love you but Jesus loves you more. A life without Christ is going to be a serious problem, it is time you release your heart and life to him, we all know what has happened. Do you want to continue the same problem? I am running out of time. What do I do? Simple, only believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. Is that all? That's all. Are you sure if I go to Chicago, Jesus will be able to save me there? Even if you travel to Chicago you can't stop the devil from catching you but if there is a problem you have someone at your back. Giving your life to Jesus doesn't mean that you won't encounter problems, but you are sure of someone that can help you solve your problems. Just like that. As simple as that. I will give my life to Jesus. Uncle Fidelis you need to give your life to Jesus. 
Are you ready? Excuse me, I am out of here. So Mama, are you going to give your life to Jesus? Yes, me too. That is good news. Be sincere in your heart as you believe and invite him. Tell him you are sorry for everything you have done. Say this after me, I know that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. Forgive me all my sins and from today I believe in my heart that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I confess with my mouth that you are my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We give you praise for the life's chaos saved. Write the name in the book of life and keep them to the end. No evil shall befall them and every household wickedness will stop today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Congratulations. Today's channel shout out is to Daniel, Patricia, Lee Blake and Debbie Blake from Jamaica. Dia and Coretta from Antigua. Gladys from Canada J Sky White TV, Eukarya and Helen from Nigeria. Tiffany, Pamela, Thandy, Shelley, Teresa, Cassidy, Nicole and Gino from USA. Rachel from Uganda, Bernard from Italy, Lydia Julius, Matthew and Maggie from Kenya. Juliana from UAE. Kabongo, Laji, Kigail and Rifilo from South Africa. Sandy from BVI. Joy and Melika from UK. Melissa from Bahamas. Drop your name and where you are watching from in the comment section to get a shout out from this channel. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to be notified when another video is being posted.